Antarctica's doomsday glacier is melting because of climate change, but it's also being heated up from below. Here's what you need to know. Climate change isn't the only factor melting the Thwaites Glacier, according to a new study from the Earth Communications and Environment Journal. Rather, the Earth itself may also be warming the massive block of Antarctic ice, which is colloquially known as the Doomsday Glacier. According to the study, the crust beneath West Antarctica is between 10 to 15 miles or 17 to 25 kilometers thick, compared with around 25 miles or 40 kilometers in the east, and this means that substantially more heat from below can access the west than can access the east. The researchers found that a geothermal heat flow of up to 150 milliwatts per square meter can occur beneath Thwaites Glacier, according to the study's lead author. Ultimately, the temperature on the underside of the glacier is dependent on a number of factors, including whether the ground consists of compact, solid rock, or of meters of water-saturated sediment, according to one of the study's co-authors, Karsten Gohl. It was already known that hidden rivers of relatively warm seawater cutting across the glacier's underbelly, plus the effects of unmitigated climate change, which warms both the air and the ocean, had caused massive melting. However, Gohl, a geophysicist, says that in addition to these factors, large amounts of geothermal heat can lead, among other things, to the bottom of the glacier bed no longer freezing completely or to a constant film of water forming on its surface. Both of these effects can ultimately result in the ice masses sliding more easily over the ground and into the ocean, causing rises in water levels. A press statement about the study notes that ice losses from the Thwaites Glacier are currently responsible for roughly 4% of the global sea level rise, but adds that this figure could increase since virtually no other ice stream in the Antarctic is changing as dramatically as the mass of Thwaites Glacier. The glacier gets its doomsday moniker from its massive size, almost as large as the UK, and the fear that if it melts, it will cause a chain reaction which collapses the other glaciers around it. According to live science, if the Thwaites Glacier collapsed entirely, global sea levels would initially rise by around 25 inches or 65 centimeters, but then without it, plugging the edge of the West Antarctic ice sheet like a cork in a bottle of wine, ice loss could accelerate throughout the region, which would lead to unprecedented levels of sea level rise. These concerns mirror similar concerns about what is happening in Greenland right now, where just two weeks ago, a massive melting event affected the ice sheet during a heat wave that brought temperatures more than twice as hot as seasonal averages, according to Danish researchers cited by Ajans France Press. There, the amount of ice that melted on one day was enough to cover the whole of Florida in two inches, or five centimeters of water, and more than half of that mass will have flowed into the ocean, according to one climate scientist who spoke to Deutsche Welle. That melting event was caused by a patch of high-pressure sucking and holding warmer air from the further south over eastern Greenland, according to Marco Tedesco, a glacier expert at Columbia University who spoke to The Guardian. However, he linked it more broadly to climate change, saying that although these atmospheric events have taken place in the past, they are now getting longer and more frequent. NASA explains that the levels of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere have been increased through the burning of coal or oil, as well as the clearing of land for agriculture, industry, and other human activities. This makes the Earth's overall temperature higher, which in turn can cause sea level rise through the melting of ice like that in Greenland. The sum of all these factors acting on the world's ice is that, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, global mean sea level has risen in total between 8 and 9 inches, or between 21 and 24 centimeters since 1880, with about a third of that coming in just the last two and a half decades. The rate of sea level rise has more than doubled from 0.06 inches or 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 0.14 inches or 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015, and this is mostly due to meltwater from glaciers and ice sheets, as well as thermal expansion from seawater as it warms. A team from NASA has previously calculated that Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets together lost 81 billion tons of ice per year in the 1990s, compared with 475 billion tons of ice per year in the 2010s. This is a six-fold increase. In total, Greenland and Antarctica have lost 6.4 trillion tons of ice since the 1990s. A number of different studies, including one published by the Danish Meteorological Institute, now say this places us at the high end of climate estimates for sea level rises. The action we need to take is clear, according to Tedesco. We need to get to net zero emissions, he told The Guardian, and we need to protect exposed populations along the coast. 
That wouldn't save us from the wrath of geothermal energy rising up from below the Earth's surface, but in both Greenland and Antarctica, it would at least mitigate against the effects of climate change we've caused ourselves. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.